So I'm very excited that I just got in the new Selmer Supreme Alto. I shouldn't say super new. I mean, it's been out for over a year, but it's new for me and I'm super, uh, super pumped about it. So anyway, the first thing that I noticed, and I, and I have opened this, it's not a true unboxing, but I'm gonna unbox it for you like it was the first time. So anyway, the, um, the first thing I noticed is that this case is one of the nicest looking and feeling sax cases I've ever seen. It has a beautiful blue textured uh, hard shell side, but that's only on the outside of the case. The rest of it, and I'll turn around so you can see, it's textured here. Um, the rest you can see is actually nylon, which is cool. So it, you know, it, it, it's heavy. I'd say that the case is probably about, oh, probably about five, six pounds, um, but it's definitely a nice feeling case. Um, on the back, you'll see that there's this nice padded space here. Two nice padded straps. They don't remove, and they are riveted on there. This thing is going to last, which is really nice. Um, so you'll notice at first here, on the back, if you take the straps out of the little holder there, and you unzip this, it's a spot to put your music, which is kind of cool. Look at that. Music. Fits a nice oversized piece of music. You can fit your folder or your binder in there, I think, pretty easily. Now, you'll also notice that on the side, there are no feet here on the side, but it does rest nicely on its side. You'll also see on the bottom that there are these little uh, pointy feet here. Now, I do, I've heard this from a few other, um, few other videos that it's not recommended to leave it on those feet if it's going to get knocked into or anything because it's not super st steady it kind of just wobbles and honestly it feels like it's going to fall forward it's weighted forward towards this um so the other videos that were saying this are actually correct the other thing you notice right away is this nice uh rubberish style pocket here selmer paris logo of course because it's selmer paris you get a nice uh fabric lined pocket here. I'd say you get maybe about an inch worth of uh, storage here. An inch depth, I should say. And on the back, I missed this the first time I opened up the case. It's actually another pocket right here. I'd say you get another, oh, well, that feels like about, oh, I'd say an inch and a half, inch and a half worth of depth uh, of pocket here. So you could put some extra mouthpieces, maybe reeds, uh, in a reed case, of course, or maybe, um, you know, some other accessories in there. I think that's a really nice little hidden spot there that you can find for it. So anyway, I'm going to open it up here and you're going to see the beautiful Selmer Supreme. Take it here. You know, I'm just going to prop up the back a little bit here so you can see it a little better on the camera. Dun, 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 dun. And you'll notice that when you open it up, you have this beautiful black uh, fuzzy case. It's nice and soft, but it's not super squishy, which really means that that saxophone is really held in there. It does not move. It's not bouncing around in the case. First thing here on top is this beautiful dust cloth. And then up below it, you've got the Selmer Supreme. Gorgeous, gorgeous color. So quickly, before I take the sax out of the box, you get to see all the cool stuff. Um, the first thing I noticed is this dust cloth is really, really beautifully made. Now, I, you know, does, it, does the saxophone need a dust cloth? I don't know. But it has the, the engraving of the saxophone is all right here. You can see the beautiful work of the flowers and the squares, the cubes. You even have a little hummingbird on the bottom. Uh, and then you've got this disc in the background. Um, a circular disc in the background. I don't know what a dust cloth really does when the case is already keeping out the dust, but I mean, hey, it's really cool. Maybe I'll use it to, you know, wipe off the saxophone a little bit. If I've got some fingerprints, I can use it to just take care of those fingerprints along the way. Also, while I'm still going on about the case here, you have 
two storage areas in this case. This one I also didn't realize at first. It actually comes out. It's Velcroed in there. It's like a little pencil case. You can put your cork grease in here, pencils. Um, you know, you could maybe fit it. You could definitely fit another mouthpiece in here if you have like a jazz mouthpiece and a classical mouthpiece. You want to keep them separate or something like that. That works. It just sticks right in the top and then zippers right up. And that sits over the neck here. There's another storage area here. I'll lift it up so you can see a little better. Whoops. Storage area right here. I didn't realize this at first, but this whole thing comes out. There's a storage space here. And then within that storage space, there's a nice little case. So I guess if you wanted to like pack up at a gig early, you put it in here. And then when you're done, you just plop it in your case and you go home. I guess that way that works there. I may not even use this. Um, I may just use the case space right there, but inside you have a beautiful, nice neck strap from Selmer. Nice um, plush part that goes on your neck and leather on the outside. And it has this very nice brass Selmer adjuster for the neck strap. It's a little bright. A little audacious, but if you know you're playing a Selmer Paris, I guess you know you might want to be a little audacious. It also has a nice Selmer branded cork grease with the Supreme engraving on it. And I'm not going to use that. I'm going to keep that. And then you have two next two swabs, one for the body of the saxophone. I say this is like a nice microfiber uh, cloth. It's the same as the dust cloth. And it has uh, a very nice knit cable here. I'm not going to unwind it. Because honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to use that one either. It's so nice looking. If I ever were to sell this horn, I think it might be nice to get some of those accessories in like new condition. It also has a separate neck swab. Again, microfiber. Has a nice engraving on it. You know, I... Are these things necessary for a horn that, you know, you're going to play? You know, most most professionals already have their setup. They have their swabs. They have the neck straps that they like. I certainly do. Um, is it necessary to include things like that in the saxophone? I don't think so. But that being said, it's a nice touch. You're paying a lot of money for a horn like this. And so it's nice to get some of those little extras. And again, you can use them, you can store them, you know, in 50 years, some, you know, your, uh, your next of kin wants to sell the saxophone and, uh, you know, is looking, so, or maybe you sell it because they come up with the Supremer saxophone and that's that. I don't know. At any rate, let's take a look at the horn. The first thing I notice about this horn is the beautiful dark gold lacquer. Um, this the color of it is just beautiful. It reminds me of a little bit of those reference horns that were out, um, you know, that have been out for the last uh, decade or two, and it looks like a throwback to that Mark VI um, lacquer that you got from the early sixes. It's beautiful. Mouthpiece, uh, sorry, not the mouthpiece cap, excuse me. The end cap, plastic. That's the Selmer S on it, but for a horn like this, I mean, I would hope that they would do something a little bit nicer. I don't know. I, You know, they spend so much time making these nice swabs and cloths and things that have the, the Selmer engraving on them and all that that are really special because this is, you know, their top, top, top of the line saxophone, most expensive, like, horn that they've produced. Plastic cap. Not my favorite. Um, this was not set up when it was sent to me. It was sent to me by a dealer um, who is not a repair uh, repair dealer. So this is not set up. But listen to these. Listen to these key keys. Feels so nice under the fingers. Now, um, another thing you'll notice here is the nickel silver um, adjustment screw here for the for the tenon and it rotates you probably have seen this already i would imagine if you're interested in the um, supreme you might notice you might have seen that but it rotates because it's free 
around a three-piece tenon here. So it's it, the body comes up through the inside of this adjustment ring. And then when you tighten it, it tightens evenly all the way around the body. So you're not getting pressure points. You're not getting spots that might leak. It's a very secure um, connection. The other thing I'm noticing here, I'll just take a little time here going across so you can see some of the key work here. The bell engraving, love that cool like ghost-like Supreme logo. Now it looks like when you take it out of the case at first that there's no engraving because the engraving does not go onto the front of the bell. I should say the side of the bell where the, the logo is. What you will notice though as you start to turn it is that all that beautiful engraving is on the front of the horn and then the side on the uh, opposite the keys. Gosh, it is so intricate. So intricate, beautiful engraving, very light. You also see that there's Henri Selmer's signature right there. The engraving continues around the bow of the saxophone and it goes all the way up the back of the saxophone there. And when I say all the way up, I mean all the way up. Even up above that high E flat key there. I should say the high F key. It's gorgeous. This is just a work of art. Now, it is interesting because a lot of the old, you know, the saxophones for, for decades coming out of Selmer Paris had hand engraving. Somebody sat in the Selmer Paris factory and with a knife and goes you can find videos of it online it's really quite amazing the, the cool thing was that if you bought a Selmer Paris horn although it was the same horn and the engraving was you know more or less the same every single horn was done by hand and slightly different <clears throat> because it was made by hand the engraving now is so much more intricate and has so many more small, tiny details, which is really cool because they do it now by machine, but it does lose a little bit of that individuality, I think. What do you think? Let me know. At any rate, the only other part of the horn uh, that comes out of the case here is, of course, the neck. Now, the neck has a nice, slim, octave key here. It's definitely slimmer than like my series two horn octave key. You have a nice, beautiful, brilliant blue S. They've gotten away from the black and the dark, the dark blue um, Selmer logos. The other thing while I'm talking about some of the differences in the changes, um, just visually, um, I should take the horn back out here, is that some of the key guards have been redesigned to a much more minimalist style. The key guard here, it's just a very small piece of metal here that goes down here and attaches each key, you know, each side to, its, to itself. And then down here, you've got just a little bit of metal. I'm wondering if that makes it easier to get inside for a repair person to level those tone holes, or if it's just the look. You know, it also may be a cost cutting uh, measure. Maybe by using a little less brass on the key guards, they can shave a few dollars or a few euros off of each horn. The key guards here are pretty standard, but again, they're just a little bit narrower. Key guard here on the E flat. And then this F key guard here on the side is open. So again, I'm wondering if that's so you can level the tone holes or it was just a new idea. The other thing that I really like when I look at this horn, um, I didn't have, by the way, anything particularly planned out for this video. So I'm sorry if I jump around a little bit. Um, but one thing that I really appreciate is that you have this nice now lacquered thumb rest and another lacquered thumb rest. No more plastic, black plastic thumb rests. I didn't mind the plastic. It felt nice under the fingers, but this just gives it just a little bit more of an upscale feel. Does it play differently because of it? No. Am I going to sound any different because of it? No. But it is a nice touch. But again, plastic end cap. Summer. 
got to do better. But anyway, I digress. This horn is just a work of art. I have had a chance to sit and play it just a little bit, um, but I'm going to save that for a different video. But I am going to just one more time give you a, li a little bit of, uh, of eye candy here as we go from the horn. So I'll, I'll get a little closer here so you can see it. Turn around, you can see some of that beautiful engraving. So anyway, that is the unboxing of my new Selmer Supreme. I should say there is one more box that comes with it that I'm not bothering to show here because it's nothing that's particularly unique to the Supreme, but there's a box that has the new Selmer concept mouthpiece, which I think now is like 10 years old. Um, I love the concept mouthpiece. I already have one for alto and I play one on soprano, so I guess I'll just have an extra. Um, it also comes with a brass plated, um, you know, slim ligature and a brass plated um, or, or brass cap. It also comes with the usual case candy, um, where, you know, which has the insurance, uh, not the insurance, the registration card. It has a couple stickers, uh, which again, I'm probably not going to do anything with if I decide to sell this in the future. You know, it might be nice to get that full brand new pack of stickers and the uh, information that comes with it and all the stuff about the registration for the warranty. But I got to say, overall, given the horn, how beautiful it is, Given the accessories, how beautiful they are, and the case is just one of the nicest saxophone cases I've ever seen. All the little accessories there with the Selmer engravings and everything. I think this is really super well thought out. I think the case, by the way, is by BAM, but it might have been made specifically for Selmer because I don't recall seeing cases quite like this out there um, that you can just buy individually. I wonder if people are going to buy the Supreme and then start selling the cases online for like super expensive amounts. I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. But anyway, that's my unboxing of the beautiful, uh, make sure that I'm not crushing anything here, of the beautiful Selmer Supreme Alto. And definitely stay tuned for another video where I'll do some playing tests on my concept mouthpiece and on some jazz setups. And you can hear how nicely and beautifully this horn sounds. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, if it sounds anything like it looks, it's going to be awesome.